Hello, my name is Brandon and today I'll be showing you how you can use Honcho to create your own customized software installers. To begin with, we need to have a project open and be in the install tab. To create a new project, go to the file menu and select the new project menu item. My project will be called test product. Once you're on the install tab, you'll see there are very many settings. Here we have some application settings, some developer settings, and some advanced settings. To begin with, we have our application name. Let's say I own a company that's called Test Company and I make one product and it's called Test Product. My application name would be Test Product. Okay. And let's say this is our first version and our website is www.testcompany.com. Now the application subpath is a relative directory in the installation directory. The application subpath directory will be appended to the user selected installation directory. For example, if I have test company slash test product and someone installs the application to program files directory, my software would ultimately end up in the program files slash test company slash test product directory. The rest of the settings here will allow you to customize your installer further but are not necessary. However, since I am planning on installing my software to the program files directory, I am going to make sure that this installer will run as administrator on Windows. By default, Honcho's install plugin will create an uninstaller named uninstaller.jar. Feel free to customize this, but for test product, the default settings are fine. And we can't forget about giving the developers of test product credit. Our software only has one, John Doe, and his email address is john.doe at testcompany.com. We are going to skip the multi-volume packaging as this is only really useful if you are planning to burn your installation files to a CD. And the last setting is the reboot action. The reboot action determines what to do in the event that your installation requires a reboot for it to finish. You can choose to ignore the reboot, notice the user that they should reboot, ask if they want to reboot, or force the user to reboot. We are going to ignore the reboot. The next tab is the languages tab. Here I can select languages that my installer will be translated to. If I add another language, like German, when I run this installer, it will give me the option to choose either English or German. For now, we are just going to default with English. And here we have our packs. A pack is a collection of files and they represent how you want to organize the different aspects of your software. You can have a pack for your binaries, sources, documentation, samples, core, library, etc. Our software is rather simple so we're only going to have one pack, a core pack. We're going to have this pack pre-selected and required because we need the core pack for the software to work. Here we can set the pack description. This will explain what the pack is for and what it contains. Every pack must have a description, so let's just say that this pack contains core files. Now that we have all that set up, we can import the files that this pack consists of. Let's begin with the core application file. The destination is going to be the variable install pack. Installation variables can be found here as well as under the view menu. It says here that the install path is the installation path on the target system as chosen by the user. This is where we want our file, so we can leave that alone. The override option specifies what to do in the event that a file exists with the same name. You can choose to update based on modification time, forcefully overwrite files, or ask the user. We just want to update the old file. If needed, you can also restrict a file to only install on certain operating systems based on their family, name, version, and architecture. Now I also want this installer to create a desktop shortcut, and I want that shortcut to have an icon, so I'll need to import that icon file as well. You can also restrict a pack by operating system in the same ways that you could restrict the pack file. And that's all that is needed for the packs panel. Next is the panels tab. These panels are the screens that the installer displays. They go in the order that they are listed here. If they are green, they are enabled and will be included in the installer. And if they are black, they are disabled and will not be included. By default, some of the panels will be enabled. The first is the hello panel, which will display a welcome message. Next is the fax panel, which allows the users to view and select which fax they want to install. After that is the target panel, which allows the user to select the installation directory, followed by the install panel, which does the actual installation. 
The last is the finish panel, which tells the user how the installation went. We are going to switch our finish panel's type to simple finish panel, as our users do not require automatic installers. Since I want a shortcut for this installer, I'm going to need to enable the shortcut panel. And now I'll need to create a shortcut. Since my installer is only going to run on Windows, we are only going to need a Windows shortcut. The shortcut name is going to be Test Product. Since this is a Java application and as such requires a JVM to run, I'm going to need to know where the JVM is located at. You can find the installation variables here, and here we can see that we have a variable for the location of the user's JVM. The Java home variable will only get us as far as the home folder, so we need to specify the bin folder in the java.exe file. Now that we have our JVM, we are going to need to tell it to run our application. This is done by the dash jar option in the location of our main application. We are using quotations around the main file's location as it contains spaces. Now we have our command and our target file to send the command to. The destination is going to be the desktop and let's set the icon to the one we imported in the core back. And that's all we need for our Windows shortcut. I'm going to set the group name to test product and let's make sure users will default with the create shortcut option selected. That completes our configuration of the panels. Next is the GUI tab which allows us to adjust some of the user interface settings. Here you can change things such as the font size, positions, and colors. You can also set the look and feel based on the operating system. Most of these settings are fine, but I typically like to use the progress bar counter and I like to have it in the navigation panel. Now that everything is configured the way I want it, I just need to build the installer. And that's all there is to making a customized installer with Honcho. Not all that's left is trying it out.